Hey folks, Ting Ting here, Caroline Ford Shore has been a while that I got a video out, so uh, I apologize for that, but I've been crazy busy. Things are starting to wrap up for me on the festival season and doing craft shows and stuff like that because it's getting cold, so now I can start focusing more on production in the shop. Um, as you know, we went to Quad State back in September, met a lot of awesome folks, a lot of you guys came out to see me, uh, got to shake hands with a bunch of you, one of them that I wanted to mention was uh, Uncle Buck's Forge. Um, Mr. Steve over at Uncle Buck's Forge makes some awesome tools for blacksmiths guys for your shop, uh, like post vice stands, portable post vice stands, striking anvils, um, swage blocks, and he does it at a very, very fair price. Uh, you guys need to check him out. While I was up there and got up with Steve, I picked up one of his inch and a half thick striking anvil uh, kits comes with everything you need all you gotta do is add legs to it uh, it comes with the base plate the striking surface and the plates that go on the feet um, show you what we got here that's what we're working on today I told him whenever I got the striking anvil he asked me if I'd make a video when, when I build it so I'm gonna make a video on building my striking anvil so hopefully it helps some of you guys out with some of the questions I've been coming across from folks about what angle to put the legs at how to position them what works best what height to put your striking anvil at uh, things of that nature so we're going to answer some of those questions in this video guys and I'm going to show you what we got down here on the table that I've got laid out alright alright guys here we have the whole kit uh, sands the legs you don't get these okay but when you get a kit for a striking anvil you get the base plate that the legs mount to and then you get the striking anvil surface that goes on top of the base plate as well as your feet with the holes pre-cut for you to be able to bolt it down to a concrete slab if you choose to. Um, so that is awesome, 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 awesome. The holes in these are pre-drilled. There's a hole in each corner there and then one in the center here because that's the layout where your legs go. And the holes are here, which is awesome that he does this for us. Um, so you can fill your legs up with lead, uh, sand mixed with oil, or anything like that not water don't put water in it it'll rust your legs out but uh, sand and oil point is it's great that these holes are here so we can once we weld our legs on put our feet on stand it up we can fill these holes in all the way up to add a lot more weight to our striking anvil to make it sturdier heavier before we weld our plate on top okay so obviously these need to be cleaned up I'm gonna if I'm gonna mark here I've got center punches right here where my legs are going to go so it's already laid out and I'm going to take and clean this up with a flat wheel just to get the paint that's on this block off of it because uh, he cuts it out of a big sheet that comes with a little bit of a coating on it or whatever but I'm going to get the paint off of it get it cleaned up to where it's ready to weld then I'm going to go put it in the campfire I've got a bonfire going well not a bonfire I've got a little campfire going out there and I've been letting the coals build up. I'm going to lay these blocks in there after I get all the rust off of them um, to preheat them for welding. So I can make sure the welds are sound. They don't cool down too fast and crack. I uh, learned that little tip from a comment in one of my previous videos. Uh, I do listen to some of the stuff you guys say. Not only does preheating your thick steel help for penetration, um, it also makes for a stronger weld because it allows it to cool down slower than it would if the metal was cold you just weld it here this is a heat sink it draws all the heat out of that weld almost immediately to where it's going to crack most likely under a lot of pressure and force so it's best to preheat these thick blocks in something like a, a fire you got you know six seven hundred degrees and use a pair of tongs pull them out set them down knock off the soot and everything off of them and stick your piece on there and start welding and it'll help it ensure that your weld seams hold up they'll all cool down together okay so we're gonna hit this with the flap wheel real quick get these in the fire then i'll talk to you about the legs as you see here i made a center line down this so i could make sure i got my two inch square tubing centered on this hole like i want so it's always best to do a layout first and then pull 45 there across the center 45 there because you want your legs turned and coming out this way instead of just straight up and down okay so always do your layout first I've got it center punch there that way once I clean all this crap off here I'll know where I'm going back to and 
it, it's always a plus. Also want to go ahead and clean that stuff off of there around the edge where the top plate will be welded to it. You also notice this hole here is a lot bigger than this hole because um, it's for when tools go you're drifting or whatever keep things from getting wedged in there you ain't ever got to worry about something getting stuck in your hardy hole you can come up and get through it through the bottom if need be okay to knock it out so uh, that's a very cool thing right there um, but we got this thing cleaned up now and we're gonna go drop it into the fire out there and start preheating it so we can get our legs welded on there. And while it's preheating, I'm going to talk to you about these legs that I've got cut laying here. Alright, for the legs, I've got basic 2 inch square tube and quarter inch thick wall. Um, you use stainless if you want, doesn't matter. Uh, but the basic principle of the legs are you want to cut the angle, as you see here. There's an angle cut on that. It's a slight angle. And that same angle is cut on this end. So that way it doesn't stand level. It stands at a cant like that. Uh, these, these angles can be between like 7 to 10 degrees. Um, you go any more than that, you're going to have an issue with it bouncing. It's going to bounce a lot. And potentially, because the more it angles this way, the less support it has underneath the striking face and it could cause your legs to just bow out like that or just start bouncing. So you want to cut your angles at 7 to 10 degrees. I've got mine cut at about 8 degrees and uh, your striking anvil height only needs to be anywhere between 22 to 24, 26 inches tall. I got mine set to be at 24 inches tall. Um, so I've cut these at 20 and 3 quarter because I've got a quarter inch here so that'll be 21 once I add that and each of these plates are inch and a half thick so that'd be three inches so I've cut these to make it to where the top of my anvil should be right around 24 inches all three of them are cut identical cut all three legs exactly the same okay okay to figure out the angle of your legs it's not difficult at all if you use a speed square you can see right here it says pivot that's your pivot point, this corner, because it locks in there, and you can pivot just like that, okay? And on this front side here, it'll show you degrees, starting at zero here all the way up to 90. So, essentially, right now you have a 90. If you wanted a 90 degree angle of that, you'd pivot around, now you're 90. Okay, but anyways, you're basing, th lining this mark, whatever number you want, say you want to seven degree we'll just go ahead and highlight that so you can see it that's seven to get seven degree angle here since it's right now it's a 90 you would just pivot up and you would line this line up with the edge of your metal 
hold it all nice and tight come to this side over here draw your line you see that angle to that 90 that's a seven degree angle okay this right here is seven degrees so if I mark all of them like that say I want to make them 20 inches long I would pull I would cut this here cross this angle I would pull 20 inches down put that exact same angle there cut that angle okay so you want this angle on both ends not difficult Swanson Speed Square you can go pick them up for pretty cheap it's your big box store plus they come with a book to tell you everything about them uh, very very handy tool like I said just pick your line your angle 7 to 10 11 degrees line it up there and you mark your angle on this side simple enough okay cut three of them all the same so you got the basic concept of the legs we're gonna finish preheating that steel we're gonna come back and we're gonna start assembling this thing okay for the striking surface we need to clean our edges up here where we're gonna be welding this because that base is gonna sit here we're gonna be welding the seam all the way around this thing so we need to clean that up simple enough Also, if you notice that he's got his mark in there, it's an anvil, it says UBF, Uncle Buck's Forge. Got it all cleaned up. I made sure not to grind that off because I want to leave that because this is the top surface for me. I want to see that. That's going to be pretty cool. Uh, he does put his touch mark in there. And I just noticed that actually because um, this thing had set outside by my shop when I took it off the truck and got some surface rust on there. And I didn't even notice that before it started rusting. And after I started cleaning up, I seen that and I just made sure to dance around it. I didn't want to take that off there but that's pretty cool all right she's definitely hot all right I've got her good and hot now I'm gonna hit it one more time with the sander real quick just to or the flat wheel just to take the dirt to sit off there and we're gonna get these legs on there
Now I need to check and make sure it's going to stand flat before I go any further. Now it's just finished welding the legs off and then we'll preheat this once I get the legs welded. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and preheat this while I'm welding the legs that way because I want this block to still be hot while this one's hot too. So let me set this off right here. Remove that. Put that back on there. We'll go set this one in the fire real quick. Actually, that thing's actually getting warm just with that. We'll do that. This thing's actually a lot warmer than I thought it was. So, we'll leave it there and let it draw some heat between the two of them. I can get these welded up real quick and we can attach that. Okay, after some consideration and doing some measuring and everything, uh, I've come to the conclusion I don't have enough lead wheel weights to fill up all three legs. So I'm going to forego the lead and I went and picked up a bag of play sand. I'm going to show you a different way than I originally planned to fill these. Uh, make sure your sand's a good dry bag of play sand. Okay, we're about full in this one. Another. Take something. Tap it down. Thing you feeling? That thing settled about three inches when I tapped it, so. Right. We're good and full. We'll leave it there and fill up the other two. All right, we got them all filled with sand. Now, we're gonna add some oil. Uh, you can use cooking oil, what kind of oil, whatever you want, motor oil. I'm gonna use, use motor oil. I've got a lot of it laying around uh, in anticipation for something. But I'm going to use some of this, and what the oil is going to do is going to go down here, and it's going to fill all the voids in this sand. You don't put a lot, and it'll slowly work its way down in there. And once it does, it's going to coat everything in there, fill all the voids, plus it's going to prevent moisture. It's going to take the place of moisture and it'll keep it from rusting out from the inside. You just let it settle. Doesn't take a lot. If it settles, you just add some more. sand 
Soak it all up good. field now it's time to degrease this clean it up and go get our uh, striking surface out of the fire and let it start preheating we're almost there guys almost there all right I've got super concentrated degreaser that I'll clean this up with so we can weld it you can see it working pretty much immediately evaporates right off Twenty minutes. This bad boy's hot. It's already went through blue. I come. You can see the blue up through here. It's it's definitely hot. See the smoke going off when I touch it. All right. We'll let that hang out for a little bit, and then we'll weld it up. Now I'm gonna let all this stuff that I've been using picked up, put away. Try to make out a new habit. Take it down and start welding it. Folks, all that's left is the braces. I'm gonna run a brace around here. I'm gonna do it in a fashion to where uh, I may hold off on that. I think I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on that on this video. On the next video, I'm gonna make the braces because with the braces, I want to put tool holder right here and maybe like a cup holder for wax on one of these ends. Um, and things like that for tools that I will need regularly at the striking angle. So that's going to conclude it for this video. Um, I'll take some pictures and stuff like that so you get a nice look at it. But go check out Uncle Buck's Forge if you want one of these uh, striking angles. Alright, well, striking angle's done. Uh, I haven't got the bracing on it, but other than that, it is finished. Ready to be put to use. So I'm going to put it to use. Uh, that big sledgehammer we started at Quad State up at the 
Roundup at John Coffee's place. I'm gonna use this to drift the eye. Mm, that's why I finished this up. So, uh, be on the lookout for that. I know it's been a while since you've seen a video from me, so I apologize for that. But like I said, we're gonna have more content coming at you faster now because I'm out of the busy season for festivals. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I really appreciate all the support, guys. Uh, make sure you check out my live streams every Thursday night at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 10 a.m., uh, weather permitting on Saturday mornings uh, and Thursday night, of course. But uh, generally, it, it goes off pretty smooth as long as it's not a terrible storm. So uh, thanks for watching, taking the time to check it out. Make sure you go over to Uncle Buck's Forge. Check out his channel. Subscribe to that. I will leave a link in the, uh, over here. Just click on that and uh, also uh, check out some of the other stuff he makes. He makes, like I said, the portable post vice stands, tool racks, things like that. He is good at it and he does it for a very good price. Swage blocks as well. Remember that. Uncle Buck's Forge. Go check him out. And thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Take things out of here.